All right, what is going on guys? For those of you who don't already know, my name is Ben. And today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys about how to calculate your own macros and create your own meal plans. That's a very, very critical skill if you guys wanna be able to have control over your health and fitness for the rest of your lives, because this is really the only skill you need to make sure that you're eating the right amounts of foods and the right foods. So make sure you guys watch the whole thing because at the end, I'm gonna be giving you guys a full list of all my suggested foods, foods that I eat on a regular basis. You can pull from that list to make your own meal plan, make it super easy. I'm also gonna let you guys know where you can get a PDF download of a summary of this presentation for easy reference in the future, including that list of foods. Um, and I'll give you guys a little bit of insight into what some next steps can be for you to really take your health and fitness to the next level. Um, before we get into it, I really want to make sure that you guys are not distracted. So let's make sure we close Facebook, put your phone down, whatever might be distracting you. Because the reality is, if you guys pay attention here and you actually internalize what I'm about to teach you, it will seriously be life changing. These skills are really the most important when it comes to being healthy, whether you want to lose weight, build muscle, um, just simply be healthy and strong, whatever your goal is, knowing how to create a, a proper meal plan and to calculate macros for yourself are just so essential, probably the number one skill. So make sure you guys are locked in. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to be giving you guys a ton of super useful info here. Um, and yeah, so just for a little background on myself, you know, I'm a health coach, I'm a personal trainer, nutritionist, been doing this for years, been doing a ton of studying about physiology, reading all the studies that I can find, reading all the articles, talking with all the experts, and I've accumulated a ton of information and knowledge. And so now my job is essentially to take that knowledge and consolidate it down into the most important pieces of information that you guys need and present that to you in the most clear and efficient way as possible. Um, so before we really get into the meat of the presentation where we really dive into the macros and the meal planning and all that, I'd like you guys to do a very quick little exercise. And this exercise is gonna help increase your motivation, both to pay attention now and also to actually apply what you're gonna be learning here. So that exercise is just simply a visualization. We're gonna take 10 seconds. I'm gonna wait for you guys. We're gonna take 10 seconds and we're gonna visualize what our life would be like once we've gained this knowledge and we have the confidence that we can make healthy food choices, we have the confidence that we know how to take care of our bodies and that we can master our health and fitness. So take 10 seconds, ask yourself, how is your life going to be different? How are you going to be feeling differently? How are you going to be sleeping differently? How are your relationships going to be with your spouse, with your kids, with your friends? How are you going to be different at work? These things are all going to be affected by you being more confident and healthier. So take 10 seconds. I'm going to count down and wait for you guys and really seriously visualize that because that is going to give you a massive boost to your motivation. All right, so hopefully you guys got some insight into how your life's gonna be different once you really master these skills, uh, because I can guarantee you that will, if you seriously apply what I'm about to teach you. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump right in. First thing we're gonna have to go over is your macros, of course. What are macros? How do you, how do you calculate them? Um, we'll take a step back and we'll start with calories. All right, so calories are just purely units of energy. Um, every food has calories. If you have a gram of, of carbs, it's going to have four calories. A gram of protein, it's going to have four. If you have a gram of fat, it's actually going to have nine calories. Um, so it's important to understand that when you are determining your calories, that's what's going to affect your weight gain or loss. We know as a basic law of physics, additional energy is going to be converted to additional mass and vice versa. If you're in a deficit of energy, you're going to lose mass. So that's how we change your weight, simply by choosing your calories. But you can't just gain weight the right way or lose weight the right way if you're just focusing on your calories. Now, if you're somebody whose maintenance calories are 2,500 and you want to lose weight, and so you're eating at 2,000 calories, but you're just eating carbs and fat and sugar, then you're probably just going to be losing weight through muscle and not really burning that much fat. Now, on the flip side, if you want to gain weight and you're eating at 3,000 calories and you're just eating you know, sh sugar and fat and, and carbs, then yeah, you're going to gain, gain weight, but it's not going to be the kind of weight you want. It's going to be fat and you're not going to be building very much muscle, even if you are training. So the really important thing here is to make sure that we're gaining or losing the right kind of weight is to have the proper ratios of macros. So macros or macronutrients are simply proteins, carbs, and fats. And like I said, protein and a carb, one gram of each of those has four calories and a fat, one gram of that has nine calories. And that's going to be important when we're ca calculating how many of each macro we're going to be eating. Um, so the first step is you have to determine your calories and then we're going to split those calories up by ratios of you know, macros. But this doesn't mean that these ratios are going to be in terms of grams, they're in terms of calories. So to choose your calories, you need to have a couple pieces of data. You need to understand your age, your gender, your height, your weight, your activity level, and of course what your goal is, whether you want to gain weight or lose weight. 
Um, so once you know that, all you got to do is punch it into a calorie calculator. I use one called caloriecalculator.net. Super easy. Just go to the website, put that information in, and it's going to give you your equilibrium calories. Hey, equilibrium calories are the level of calorie that you consume that's going to keep you at the same weight. No gain, no loss. Now, if you want to gain weight, you're going to add three to 500 calories per day to that. And if you want to lose weight, you're going to subtract three to 500. It really is that simple. Um, another thing, little side piece of information for you guys is that one pound of body weight is equal to 3,500 calories. So if you are in a 500 calorie a day surplus, that's going to be 3,500 surplus over the course of a week, and you should gain a pound a week and vice versa. If you're in a 500 calorie a day deficit and you actually sustain that over the course of the week and you have a 3,500 deficit over that week, you should lose a pound a week, right? So that's kind of an important number for you guys to understand. Now, that being said, there's so many factors that affect your metabolism and how many calories you're consuming versus burning that it's pretty much impossible to specifically hit 500 deficit or 500 surplus exactly every single day. And in order for you to do that, you know, to gain that pound a week or to lose that pound a week, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to be doing that perfectly accurately all the time. But we just set our target and then we get pretty close. Um, so once you guys understand your calories for this video, we're just going to use 2000 as an example. Um, you need to figure out your macros, right? So there's two ways to do that. The first way is just simply determining your macros as percentages of those calories. So you want to keep in mind that carbs and protein are each four calories per gram or as fat as nine. So if you want to allocate, let's say 500 calories to your protein and 500 to your fat, you would be getting 125 grams of protein, but only 55.5 grams of fat. And that's because of the difference in calorie per gram. Um, so typically you're just going to start with a 50% carb, 25% protein, 25% fat ratio, determine how many grams that equates to based on how many calories you're allocating to each macro. Um, and then you can feel free to make some adjustments, right? Some people's bodies respond much better to a high carb diet. Some people do better on low carbs. Um, you can make some tweaks. You can drop your carbs down to 40%, increase protein and fat to 30%, uh, whatever is going to be best for you. Um, but really just start with that 50, 25, 25 ratio, and then make minor adjustments from there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you are going to be putting yourself into a caloric deficit, you want to make sure that you're maintaining a minimum protein level. You don't want to just drop your protein super low because then you're likely to lose muscle as you lose your weight and lose the fat. Um, so I'd say kind of a floor for protein is 0.8 grams per, uh, per pound of body weight. So if you're dropping your calories and your, uh, your protein comes out to lower than 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, then you're going to want to consider readjusting those ratios, increasing protein up, you know, it could go as high as 35% and decreasing the carbs and the fat. So the, the ratio thing is not like a magic number. It's just a place for you to start. And then you're going to have to make adjustments using your common sense based on making sure you keep your protein high enough. And another factor you can consider is that at the end of the day, carbs and fat are really both just energy sources. They definitely do play different roles in the body but they're somewhat interchangeable. With protein, you gotta get that minimum amount, but when it comes to the carbs and fat, you can interchange them a little bit. If you wanna decrease your carbs a bit and add fat, that's fine, or vice versa. Um, so moving on, once you understand the percentage of the percentage ratios, you wanna make sure that you are gonna be getting the minimum protein, which brings us to the second method, which is the method I use, which I think is a lot more effective. Um, because it really takes into account your goals and whether you're getting enough protein, getting enough fat. Um, just like you need a, min a minimum amount of protein, you also need a minimum amount of fat. And the reason for that is because fat becomes the building block for many key hormones. So if you just drop your fat super low, your hormone levels are going to suffer, and that's going to have way, way more damaging effects on your results than really anything else can. Because ultimately, it's the metabolism and the hormones that drive all the muscle growth or the fat burning or whatever it is, right? The way we eat and the way we train are really just methods of stimulating the hormones in the right direction. So um, my method really starts by choosing your calorie level first and then figuring out how much protein do I want to get. Um, so I would say go for about a gram per pound of body weight. If you're really trying to build up muscle and gain weight, you can bring that as high as about 1.2 grams per pound of body weight um, and then filling in the rest of those calories with the carbs and the fat. Um, the reason you don't want to just go crazy on the protein is because your body can really only digest and utilize so much. So if you're going to be just eating two grams of protein per pound of body weight, and you're eating two to 300 grams of protein every day, then, you know, you're just going to be eating so much that your body can't process it all. And what happens in that case is that your body does a process called gluconeogenesis, which is where it converts protein into glucose anyway, which is from carbs. And so you really might as well just be eating more carbs and less protein in that case. And the problem with that is that carbs are actually easier to digest. Protein is much more inflammatory to digest 
So you're going to have more uh, free radicals going through your body and more cell damage as a result of digesting all that protein. You're not even getting the benefit of the protein because it's getting converted to glucose anyway. Um, so that's why you don't want to go crazy on the protein. There's no sense. It doesn't do anything for you. Um, you really don't need to go over 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. And then the rest is going to get filled in with the carbs and the fat. Um, so, you know, let's say, for example, we have a 2000 calorie diet and we just want to go one gram per pound of body weight. Um, then that's going to be, you know, let's say somebody who's 150 pounds, that person's going to be eating 150 grams of protein, right? So that's going to be 600 calories allocated to the protein. Now you're going to have 1400 calories left. You can allocate that to the carbs and the fat. Um, when it comes to fat, I would say that a general rule of thumb is that you don't want to dip it really that much below 60 grams. You know, if you're somebody who's lighter weight, maybe you're in the 100 to 150 pound range, then you can probably go as low as about 50. But in general, we don't really, in general, we don't really want to dip our fat below 60 grams. So if you want a really low fat diet, then you can just simply put, you know, your 150 grams of protein or however many pounds of body weight you are, your 60 grams of fat, and then calculate how many calories that takes, how many calories you have left is how much carbs you're going to have. So let's say we have, you know, 500 calories left, then with four grams, four calories per gram on carbs, we're just simply going to have 125 grams of carbs. So I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you guys, but really the, the main picture here is that you're just going to simply start by figuring out your protein. And that's usually going to be about a gram per pound of body weight. And then you're going to see how many calories you have left. And you're going to fill that in with carbs and fat. And like I said, carbs and fat have a little bit of leeway because they're both energy sources. So just make sure you're not dropping your fat too low, but ultimately you can more or less choose how much carbs and fat you want to fill in the gap of that calorie goal. Um, so yeah, those are pretty much the two, um, you know, two strategies, right? You can just simply do your percentage ratios, which is fine, um, but it's just not really optimal for protein. So I would just first start with choosing your protein and then filling in the gaps with the energy sources, carbs and fat. Um, so it's pretty easy, right? So now once you have your, um, your calories and you have your macro goals, the next step is how do we actually hit those consistently and accurately? So one strategy that you can do is use a food tracking app. My Fitness Pal is you know, probably the most common one. And all you got to do is in that app, you just type in what your goals are. You can set, you know, I want this many calories. I want this percentage of my macros. And then it's going to give you targets for how many calories and how many of each individual macro you hit each day. And then throughout the day, as you eat, you just upload the food right in there. And then it's going to give you kind of a running total for each of these categories. And as you get closer and closer, you see how much you have left in each category. Um, if you're trying to gain weight, then it's kind of more a matter of like, I need to reach these targets. And if you're trying to lose weight, it's more a matter of, I need to make sure I stay under these targets. Um, but yeah, this makes it super easy for you to be very, very accurate. It also gives you a lot of flexibility with the foods that you eat. You don't have to eat super consistently because at the end of the day, you're just trying to hit your macros and you can hit your macros in an unlimited different number of ways. And as long as you're uploading and tracking consistently, you're going to be accurately hitting them no matter what you're eating. Um, but the problem with this is that it's really tedious uploading your food every single time you eat, especially when you have to measure things out, you have to get a food scale, you're going to have to weigh out ingredients. Um, if it's something that's packaged or pre-made, you can just scan the barcode, which does make it easy, but ultimately tracking your food is uh, very tedious. And ultimately I don't really like to do it. It's a lot of work. And so um, I recommend that everyone tries doing it for some period of time. It's a great exercise. It's going to really give you a good mental reset and show you what serving sizes really look like and help you become aware of how much you're consuming. Um, but it's, in my opinion, not really something sustainable, not something you should be doing forever. So I believe it's much more effective to simply build a meal plan. Once you have a meal plan, you don't really have to measure, you don't have to track, as long as you're actually just eating what's on the meal plan, then it's gonna be much easier for you. Um, the downside of this is that it does get a little bit more monotonous, right? You might get bored of eating the same things all the time. Me personally, I don't really get bored of that. I'd rather eat the same things consistently because I really just like to eat for fuel. Um, and that's another perspective you guys should, should consider is like food is fuel, right? Food is not pleasure. If you guys are going to eat food for pleasure, you're going to eat a snack or a treat or a cake or whatever it is, then you need to understand that you're doing that for pleasure. You're not doing that for nutrition. You know, eating chips is not food, right? Eating chips is having a drink of alcohol. Eating chips is... Um, you know, for people who live in a legal state, smoking weed, right? It's not nutritious. It's not beneficial. You're doing it for your pleasure. And that's fine. You can do that. But that's the perspective you need to have because that perspective is going to allow you to limit it, right? You wouldn't just drink alcohol all day, every day, just because you think it makes you feel good because you know it's bad for you. You are going to do it sometimes and you understand the trade-off you're making. You understand you're making a trade-off from your health towards your, your pleasure and what your mind wants to do. And that's okay to do sometimes, but you need to have that same kind of mentality when it comes to unhealthy foods. Um, so 
you guys are building your meal plan, it's really actually not that difficult. And if you learn the skill of how to build the meal plan, then you're not going to really have to worry about getting bored because whenever you need to, you can simply build yourself a new meal plan. Um, so what you're going to do is, again, we're going to use my fitness pal because this is how you're going to set it up. Um, you're going to set your calorie and your macro targets, and then you're going to start filling my fitness pal as though you're eating throughout the day with the foods that you want to add to your meal plan. Um, and you're going to use my fitness pal to adjust portion sizes and add and take away foods until you build out a day of eating that accurately hits your macros. Um, and then you can build it. You can do the same thing every day. You can do different things each day. You can cycle days. You can do whatever you want. You can use this to build out multiple meal options for you know yourself. Maybe you have three different options for breakfast that are all pretty much the same macros and calories, three different options for lunch, three for dinner, and then you can just cycle them. You know, the nice thing about a meal plan and consistency is it also makes it very, very easy for you to shop, right? You can just go get a bunch of the same things and then it's really easy, really consistent. You don't have to question yourself and you just know what you're going to make. And when you know what you're going to make, then it's much easier to eat healthy because you can make the decision in advance and you can pre-plan. And when you're making the decision in advance, you're in a much more logical state of mind. It's easy for you to say right now, I'm going to have salmon and broccoli for dinner. But then if dinner rolls around and you don't have a plan and you don't know what you're going to eat and you look in the fridge, you see that frozen pizza, you're much more likely to just go for that frozen pizza. So it's really important that we make our decisions in advance when we're in that more logical state of mind. So again, that's why I think meal planning is really good. I think it's good to have a meal plan that you can make for yourself um, so that you can make sure you're only eating the foods you like. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, the most important thing by far is that you have a meal plan that you enjoy so that you can stick with it consistently. Um, so, you know, that being said, I think just quick, quick little recap here. Um, you first calculate your calories, right, by just putting it in the caloriecalculator.net, super easy. Um, you figure out your equilibrium calories. If you want to gain weight, you're going to add three to 500. If you want to lose weight, you're going to subtract three to 500. Then you're going to determine your macros. You either just simply use percentage of calorie ratios. The most common is 50% carbs, 25% protein, 25% fat. Um, and then from there, you can adjust those ratios a little bit to kind of get to where you want to be. Um, or you can use my method, which is where you start by choosing your protein target, something between 0.8 and 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. I suggest as a rule of thumb, just go for one gram. Um, and then you're going to figure out how many calories you have left. You're going to fill in the gaps with your carbs and your fat. Uh, make sure that your fat doesn't really dip below about 60 grams. And otherwise, you can just fill in the rest with carbs. If you want more fat, you can add more fat and take away a little bit of carbs, whatever you want, right? The important thing is that it's based on what you like. Um, and you can always adjust and you can always iterate. You, you're going to learn your body. And the more that you make decisions for yourself, the more you're going to learn how your body works, how it responds to different foods, and you can make adjustments as you go. So I wouldn't overthink it. I would just choose some macro targets, set them and start working on them. Um, and then if you need to make adjustments from there, you can, right? So you get your calories, you get your macros, and then you build your meal plan. You build your meal plan in my fitness pal. So you can make sure that the foods you choose are actually accurately hitting those macros. You can build out the same plan every day. You can build out a different plan for a full week and then just cycle through multiple times, you know, just repeat the weeks. Um, you can also do the options for each meal, right? So three breakfasts, three lunch, three dinners. Um, and then that way it's going to make you have that flexibility, but also the consistency. So it's easy to shop. Um, so I think it's pretty straightforward how you guys do that now. Um, if you have questions, obviously you can, you can reach out to me. So now let me real quickly go through some general rules of thumb that you guys are going to want to incorporate when you are building out your meal plans, right? So it's not just about hitting your macros. Of course, it's nice to hit those as a priority, but you can hit your macros by eating protein shakes and cereal, right? But we want to make sure that we're actually eating healthy foods as well. So there's a difference between hitting your calories and then hitting your macros and then actually eating healthy, right? A lot of people in the fitness industry love to talk about this concept of if it fits your macros. And that basically just says, you can eat whatever you want as long as you're hitting your macros. And to some extent, that's true. You will probably get the body composition that you want if you eat that way, even if you're not eating the healthiest, but you're not gonna be healthy, right? At the end of the day, health is super important. It's not just about how we look. So if you guys want to make sure we're healthy, then we want to do things like avoiding, um, you know, things that are going to cause free radical damage. Free radicals are just extra electrons that come from various inflammatory processes in the body. And those electrons essentially bind to new molecules, ripping their electrons off, causing this whole chain reaction of molecular disruption, which damages your cells. And ultimately what that leads to is DNA mutations, which puts you at a higher risk for cancer. So we want to keep inflammation down. We don't want to be eating inflammatory foods. And there's all kinds of things that can affect our hormones. So something like you know, refined sugar from a macro perspective could be the exact same as brown rice.
but from a physiological perspective, it's not the same, right? The brown rice is going to raise your blood sugar levels much more gradually. You're not going to have a big insulin spike. The refined sugar is going to spike your insulin, which is going to lead to insulin resistance and ultimately diabetes. So if it fits your macros idea is um, accurate for just focusing on how you look, but it's nowhere near accurate for maximizing your health. So let's talk about these, these rules of thumbs and these tips for actually building a healthy meal plan. So tip number one is base every meal on vegetables. The majority of the volume of food you eat should be vegetables or plants in general. Um, but base every meal on vegetables first. Think, okay, I'm going to have a bunch of broccoli. I'm going to have a bunch of kale. I'm going to have a bunch of spinach, whatever it is. And then you're going to add things on top of that. The next step is include a significant protein source. In general, unless it's really just like a pre-workout meal and you're just trying to get some carbs in, every meal should have quite a bit of protein. You know, for in general, obviously everybody's body weight's different, but kind of in general, you should be going for about between 30 and 50 grams of protein in each meal. So first base it in vegetables, add a protein source. I'm gonna give you guys lists of specific um, sources in all of these categories later. Um, but so vegetables, protein source, include a medium-sized carb source in each meal, unless you're trying to do keto, in which case you're not eating carbs. But for most people who are just eating a balanced diet, um, include a medium-sized carb source in each meal. We don't want to go crazy on our carbs and we don't want to eat a ton of carbs all at once because that's just going to give us a blood sugar spike. We don't want a blood sugar spike. What happens if blood sugar levels are high is all that sugar in your blood can damage the lining of your veins and that can cause all sorts of problems. You know, that can cause uh, blood clots and spills of blood into various regions of your brain and into your heart. You can get heart attacks, you can get stroke, all these issues if the lining of our veins is not healthy. So we don't want a whole lot of sugar circulating around our blood. So what the body does to get rid of that sugar is the insulin, right? The insulin is what allows the cells to absorb that sugar. But we also don't want to be spiking our insulin too much because if we do that, then we build a resistance to the insulin, like a tolerance. And so then you're ultimately just going to develop insulin resistance, which can become type 2 diabetes. Um, so yeah, we don't want to be going crazy on carbs. Just a medium-sized carb source is perfect. Um, step number four or tip number four is include a side of healthy fats. So you know, a lot of people think, oh, fats are just bad, but there's a lot of very healthy fats out there. Fats from fish is really good, avocados, nuts, olive oil. Um, these unsaturated fats are going to be really healthy for you, and they become the building blocks of hormones. So we want to make sure that we are getting some level of healthy fats in each meal. Um, so a quick recap, it's based in vegetables, protein source, medium-sized carb source, um, small to medium-sized fat source, um, making sure they're healthy, unsaturated fats. Um, next step, and it's not critical for every single meal, but it is most definitely ideal, is incorporate some whole grains. So lentils, quinoa, brown rice, these are gonna be really good because they're full of fiber. And when you consume a lot of fiber, it cleans out your digestive system, it cleans out your colon, reducing the risk of colon cancer, and it also cleans the plaque out of your arteries. And that's gonna reduce your risk of stroke and heart attack. So fiber is critical, fiber is the best because it's also a prebiotic. So it's actually what your microbiome, the bacteria living in your stomach eat. And so if you want to have a healthy microbiome, which is just huge because the microbiome is really the centerpiece. It's like the control center of your whole body. So you want to make sure you have a healthy microbiome, feeding a fiber all the time. Um, step number six, or I guess the first ones were like what you should eat. Step number six, seven, six and seven are what you should not eat. So you really want to avoid processed foods, um, including meat, but especially added sugars. Processed sugar is absolute killer. So we want to avoid processed carbs and sugars. We want to avoid processed meat. Processed meat like hot dogs have a lot of carcinogens in them, which is going to increase your risk for cancer. So really anything processed, do your best to avoid. Next one is avoid high sodium seasonings. So with sodium, if you have high sodium levels, A, it dehydrates you, B, high sodium levels in your blood are going to also cause damage to the lining of your veins and arteries. And that, of course, can cause um, essentially more free radical damage and just put you at higher risk for all sorts of medical complications. So we do not wanna get our sodium high. We wanna keep the sodium low. High sodium means high blood pressure. Low sodium means low blood pressure. So avoid high sodium seasonings. Instead, go for herbs and spices. Herbs and spices are actually packed with antioxidants that are gonna reduce free radical damage. So these are gonna be really, really good for you. And they taste just as good, probably better. So if you have high sodium seasonings, get rid of those and just get some herbs and spices and it's gonna be much, much better, healthier and taste better. Um, next. Next tip is just stick to water, tea, and black coffee. You know, you don't need to be drinking your calories. You don't need to be drinking soda. Soda is probably the worst thing you could ever drink um, or consume at all. You don't need to be drinking beer all the time. Like these things, you just cut them out. Like it's so easy. Just drink water, black tea, and coffee, or black coffee and tea. You know, it's just going to make you so, so much healthier. If there's any one source that people are getting probably the majority of their unhealthy foods from and their unnecessary calories, 
it's liquids, you know, it's soda and it's these even juice. Juice is so full of sugar. You just don't need it. It's really the human body is not designed to eat such highly concentrated amounts of things like refined sugar. It's just just cut it out, please. Trust me. Next one is to leave a calorie budget for snacks. Right. I know that we're not always going to eat perfectly. So if you guys are aiming for 2000 calories a day, then maybe build your meal plan to hit 1800 calories and give yourself that little bit of leeway so you can have a snack each day. If that's what's going to help you be consistent. And the important thing here is that you build a meal plan that's reasonable for you. It's not about building the most perfect, most optimal meal plan. It's about building one that's you know 95% good, but more importantly, is balanced enough and sustainable enough for you that you enjoy it, that you can be consistent with it. So if you need to leave yourself a little bit of a calorie budget for some snacks, even if that's not the healthiest snack, even if you want to have a little bit of ice cream at the end of the day, that's fine. Just make sure that you budget for it. Um, and then tip number 10 is have a cheat meal. You know, one cheat meal per week is actually going to be beneficial for you uh, for two reasons. One, on a mental aspect, if you know that you can have a cheat meal, then you don't feel like you're being 100% strict all the time and you can have that balance. And two, you have a hormone called leptin and leptin is released by fat cells when there's a lot of fat in them. And what leptin does is it makes you feel satiated and full, right? And so if you're dieting and you're trying to lose weight then, and you're burning fat, then your leptin levels drop. And when your leptin levels drop, you get hungry. And so if you want to make sure that you can replenish your leptin levels, you just have that one cheat meal per week and having that influx of um, calories and fats and carbs is going to spike your leptin levels. You're going to feel much more satiated and you're going to be able to be more successful with your nutrition strategy for the rest of the week. So those are my tips. Uh, the very last piece of this presentation in terms of the information I'm giving you guys is going to be my list of foods. So let me really quickly just pull this up. I'll screen share with you guys and we will just go over it. All right, so here we go, get that Zoom thing out of the way. And these are the foods that I think you guys can pull from. Like I said, I'm gonna have a PDF download for you guys. So you have all this information right in front of you. You don't have to like screenshot right now, I'll have it for you. Um, but we got these protein sources. Um, you'll notice some things are in both categories, whole eggs, for example. An egg has pretty much just as much fat as protein. So yeah, it's a protein source, but it's also a big fat source. If you guys like to have eggs in the morning, I'd recommend that you go about 50-50 whole eggs and egg whites. Egg whites are just pure protein. It's the yolks that have all the fat. So if you guys are gonna have the eggs, if you go five, six whole eggs, that's a lot of fat. But if you go three whole eggs and you know three or four egg whites, then you're gonna get quite a bit of protein and a pretty reasonable amount of fat. Um, beef obviously is a good one. Chicken, turkey, salmon. I mean, fish is always solid. If you're gonna get fish, make sure you're getting wild caught fish. We do not want all those antibiotics and um, and chemicals that they put into the farmer's fish. Um, again, if you're going to be eating fish, do your best to avoid tuna all the time. It's fine to have, um, but don't go crazy on it because it is high in mercury and we want to avoid these heavy metals. They're toxins in the body. Um, other plant-based protein sources are going to be lentils, beans, really any kind of beans, but black beans are some of the best. They're really, really packed with nutrients, kidney beans, garbanzo beans, um, any, really any kind of bean. Lentils, I guess quinoa has some protein, but just not really that much. So I just left quinoa on the carb source um, and then tofu or tempa. Tempa is just a cleaner, healthier, less processed version of tofu. So I'll just go for that. Um, and then moving on to the carb sources, you'll notice still a lot of overlap. Um, lentils, black beans, kidney beans, beans and lentils, whole grains, just so fire, like really, really good for you. Full of fiber, full of protein, full of carbs and carbs are healthy, right? If you're getting healthy carbs, they're great for you. So uh, beans, whole grains, really, really good stuff. I would totally incorporate all this. Um, and when you are choosing your protein sources, you know, I'm not going to come out here and say you all need to be plant based because I know a lot of people love meat. I love meat too. And I do eat meat, but I don't need a ton of it. You know, I, I limit my meat consumption because meat has a lot of chemicals, a lot of um, antibiotics, a lot of just problems in the way that it's processed. Now, if we could go out and eat wild caught meat all the time, then that'd be great, but we can't. So realistically, we do want to do our best to somewhat avoid meat and shift our nutrition a little bit away from meat and more towards plant-based protein sources. Like I said, not 100%, but just being mindful of that is important. Um, so with the carb sources, right, we have our whole grains, we have our beans, um, we have our fruits, right? Apples, bananas, berries are huge. Berries are full of antioxidants, so they're going to reduce that free radical damage and give you guys a lot of uh, reduction in your inflammation levels. Um, so which is also going to have a positive impact on your cognitive function, your brain. So, you know, berries are awesome. Really any fruit is solid. Um, these are just the ones that I list because these are the ones that I eat the most, but any fruit solid um, tomatoes are killer full of vitamin C um, sweet potatoes are some of the best type of carbs you can get. 
Um, they are going to be a little bit higher glycemic, so they're going to spike your blood sugar a little more than some other kinds of um, foods can, um, but they're still full of nutrients, especially the skin. Tons of vitamins, really, really good stuff for you. Great source of carbs, especially immediately post-workout. White potatoes are also great. You know, a lot of people assume that just because something's white, it's bad. White potatoes have a ton of vitamins too. I will say sweet potatoes are probably a bit better, but both are good. Whichever one you like more, just go for that. Um, if you are going to have pasta, just make a whole grain or try to go for gluten-free. Um, and then Ezekiel bread. Ezekiel bread is just a kind of bread. It is also gluten-free. It's going to be found actually in the freezer section. And that's because um, it has no pesticides, no preservatives. It's probably the cleanest kind of bread you can get. And again, like I said, it's gluten-free. It also has really high levels of protein. So it's really, really, really solid. Um, your fat sources, like I mentioned, we have our eggs, um, really any kind of nuts, but these are just the ones I eat. Avocados are amazing. Everyone should be eating avocados all the time unless you're allergic to them. Um, olive oil, solid. Coconut oil, solid. Coconut oil does have higher levels of LDL cholesterol, which is low density lipids, um, which are considered to be the bad kind of cholesterol. Um, so don't go crazy on it, but it's okay. Salmon or other fatty fish. So the fat in fish is really quality because it's omega-3 fat um, as opposed to omega-6. Omega-6 fat is what you're more finding in land animals. So beef, chicken, turkey, all that. Um, and you need both. But what's important is that you have the right ratios of omega-3s to omega-6s. And because the majority of our diet comes from land meat, we're getting a lot more omega-6 than we need relative to the omega-3. So, you know, from the majority of people's diets, the more omega-3, the better. Um, and that's what you're going to be getting in fish. Um, and then peanut butter, I think, is an awesome one. If you are going to get peanut butter, just make sure you read the ingredients. Try to get one that's not a bunch of added sugar. Um, the least processed, the most natural, the better. Um, and then canned tuna also is going to have some quality amounts of omega-3 uh, fatty acids in there. Keep in mind, though, the canned tuna is going to have mercury. So again, don't go crazy on it, um, but it is a solid source. In terms of vegetables, obviously, all vegetables are amazing. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, um, those are going to be really, really good and really good for avoiding um, cancer and uh, basically DNA mutations throughout your body. And I'm not just saying that, like there are studies that prove the, I mean, there's in vitro studies that show how droplets of broccoli and cauliflower extract kill cancer cells. There are studies in people that show how more consumption of um, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, um, reduce the presence of uh, DNA mutations in the blood. So these are gonna be super quality, go for these. Uh, same with Brussels sprouts. I mean, pretty much everything on here is just really, really high quality vegetables. All vegetables are great. Whatever you like the most is the most important. Um, but these are a few right here that I think are super critical, uh, especially spinach. Spinach is just awesome. I love spinach. Um, snacks, I would say with snacks, just, you know, nuts are great. Fruit's great. Any vegetables, great. You can eat unlimited vegetables for snacks. Um, leftover meals. If your meals are healthy, just eat more of that. You know, snacks don't necessarily have to be something that's unhealthy. Snack just means you're eating a small amount of food. So your leftover meals are fine. Uh, canned tuna, I guess canned tuna is really making a lot of appearances here, uh, but it is just honestly a really all around solid snack, protein source, fat source, um, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean, ideally you leave the jelly out because that's just sugar, but if you like it, it's fine. Um, peanut butter, as long as that peanut butter is not super processed and sugary. Ideally the bread here is Ezekiel bread or at least whole grain. Um, yeah, some solid snacks here. Like I said, snacks don't have to be unhealthy. You can just eat snacks that are just regular food. Um, I personally just like to eat ingredients most of the time. Like for me, a snack could just be, I'll just go in the fridge and I'll just eat some berries or I'll just eat some tomatoes or um, I'll eat some cucumber or whatever. And like, that's a good snack. It doesn't have to be just this whole ex extravagant thing. It doesn't have to be like salted and flavored and chips or whatever, you know, snacks can just be regular food. Um, and then in drinks, I would go for obviously water is the number one. If you're gonna have coffee, ideally it's black. You don't wanna get a bunch of extra uh, sugar in there. If you wanna mix something in, just go for almond milk. If you really like milk, I mean, I personally don't really drink milk, but if you really like it, just go for 2% of that free. Um, tea is of course always gonna be great. Oat milk's another one. Oat milk's nice because it gets you more carbs. So if you wanna get more carbs into your diet, particularly right after a workout or before the workout, oat milk's a good one. Um, any kind of protein shake, plant protein, whey protein, plant's gonna be a little better, whey's more inflammatory, but you know, at the end of the day, it's whatever you like. And if you are going to drink, um, tequila and vodka are probably just the cleanest. You just want to avoid cocktails that have a bunch of sugar or beer or, uh, I mean, ideally you're just drinking straight hard liquor. That's probably the cleanest way to do it. Um, you can mix it with like soda water and some lime or something like that. If you want to, that's probably my go-to. Um, and yeah, and I, I get that a lot of this stuff isn't the most delicious, right? But I'm not here to tell you guys, you know, these are the unhealthy foods that you can eat. I'm here to tell you this is optimal, right? This is, these are the foods that I eat most of the time. Um, if you're really somebody who struggles and you're just like, I need these snacks, I need these flavors, 
then that's more of a mindset issue. And we can work on that in a separate way. But if you guys are really looking for like the optimal suggestions, then that's what you got right here. Um, yeah, so those are my foods. That is pretty much uh, everything I got on the information. Hope you guys learned some good stuff. It's really, really important you guys actually internalize this and apply it because like I said, it can literally be life-changing if you guys actually do this. Um, so if you need to watch it again, I'm gonna have that PDF download for you guys. Um, and really quickly before I wrap up here, I just wanna give you guys a little info on a new offer that I, have, I actually have that's gonna help you implement this. Um, and this is not anything that I'm trying to sell. This is just something that my assistant coach, Jared, and I are doing to help you guys out. And it is a 25-minute roadmap coaching call. And we're basically just going to talk with you about what your goals are, your personal situation, and then help you craft a game plan to get to where you want to be, to implement these skills that I taught you here. Um, and ultimately, you know, talk about your exercise and your nutrition and kind of create a holistic approach to help you get from where you're at now to where you want to be. Um, so it's really important that you guys actually get on this because, you know, Jared and I are both certified trainers, nutritionists. We have years and years of experience. We can totally help you guys out, um, telling you exactly what you need to both do, but also teaching you what you need to know. So these calls are going to be super valuable and super helpful for anyone who gets them. Um, but because we both are you know, very qualified and we don't have all the time in the world, we're pretty limited on how many spots we can take. We're only going to be doing a couple of these for, per week, and we're probably only going to do this for a couple of weeks. Um, so what I would recommend is that you guys just comment right here, letting me know if you're interested. I can just go ahead, reach out, get you set up, assuming we still have spots available. Um, but yeah, just go ahead, drop that comment real quick. If you guys want to get on a call with one of us and we'll be able to coach you through this, help you um, implement what I just taught you, build a nice roadmap and strategy for going forward. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what we got. So like I said, comment that. If you guys have any questions at all about what we just went over, I know it was like a lot of information to throw at you, but if you have any questions, just go ahead and comment this as well or reach out to me directly. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so again, hope this was helpful, guys. I'm always here to help you, whatever you need. Just reach out to me. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Cheers, guys.